Okay, fuck yeah! You got an NFT, baby. Let's mint that shit on the fucking blockchain forever. Okay, so this is where we left off. We got this NFT. It's a movie NFT. Uh, we got our animated GIF. We think it looks cohesive. Uh, they're both squares. That is neat. Um, definitely have them be the same uh, size or shape. So moving down here. Um, here we go. Um, we're going to probably do a fixed price or you can just have it open for bids and just have it, you know, say, hey, put a bid on this. Tell me what you want. I think people can bid on it even if you have a fixed price. Um, I would recommend, uh, like I said, we're going to turn this into uh, a series of 10 NFTs as opposed to a one of one. I would recommend that. You can do a one of one if you'd like. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You're your own sovereign human being. Get it. Um, but yeah, I would do a 10, a 10, a 10 set <laughs> because, um, like I said before, it's going to be easier for you to sell 10 for 50 as opposed to one for 500, especially being like a newer artist like I am. We're not super well known. Maybe you are. Maybe you are. You know, set your price according to your your value that you perceive. Don't sell yourself short, but also understand that, you know, um, you want to make it um, within reach of most people out there. I right now, given the price of Ethereum, would probably set, you know, my first NFTs to 0 0.02 Ethereum. That's $67. I would probably, uh, when, when you set yours, go off the dollar value and not the Ethereum value because Ethereum obviously changes value quite frequently and quite sporadically. Um, I would say if you're going to do a set of 10, aim for around 50 bucks. I think that's that's where I've found is kind of the golden region for actually making sales as as uh, a lesser well-known artist. Uh, but you do you, boo. Um, moving on down here, um, you, you can actually put extra content in here that people can unlock once they purchase the NFT. I don't think we really need to do that. So uh, if you wanna do that, you can look into that on your own. We're just gonna skip it for now. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, this is, uh, where you choose the collection that it will be minted under. I think you should just go ahead and mint it under the rareable collection. Um, it is much cheaper. If you want to create your own collection, you're going to have to create a smart contract on the blockchain for that. And that can be quite expensive. So if you want to do that in the future, go for it. I think for your first mints right now and keeping it cheap for you, um, let's just mint to, to the rareable collection title. Um, you know whatever you want. I'm going to put Swifty by Cromulon. Um, description. Um, you can put whatever you want here too. I personally like to put something like this unique, unique NFT commemorates the Cromulon song. Swifty. I do that just because um, there are some NFTs out there that will include intellectual property where you are actually selling the rights to your song. They are definitely the exception and not the rule. So if you didn't say anything like this, um, it would be tough or yeah, no one would actually be able to claim that they own the song because they own this NFT especially since there's going to be 10 of these ones. Um, I like to just cover my ass and future-proof my shit if I can. So I would put something like this in there that says it's commemorative and that it you could even put doesn't include any intellectual property. I think that's maybe a little overkill, but um, yeah, do whatever you want there. This is the cool part about NFTs. You can program in royalties. So if someone buys your NFT and then they sell it, on the open market in like 10 years when you become really famous and they sell it for like, you know, you sold yours just now for like 50 bucks. They might sell it to somebody else for like a hundred thousand because you're really fucking famous now and everyone loves you and you can actually get royalties off of that. So you would get $10,000 if they sold it for a hundred thousand and that is, would just automatically be deposited into your MetaMask account going to this account number 
in the future. So you always want to keep this safe, of course. Um, and you don't have to do anything. If you don't have to know that it has sold, automatically the platform will just give you 10% of that sale price. So you can put up to 50%. I think 10% is fair. So I usually do 10%, but you can do whatever you want. Again, whatever you think your perceived value is, do that. Uh, we're going to do number of copies here. Like I said, I think 10 is the sweet spot, but you can do whatever you want. And um, cool, everything's good to go. Look it over one more time. Hell yeah, we don't need advanced settings here. This is if you, it's like a shirt or there's some physical part of it. Um, you can put in even more text. Um, we are not gonna do that, unnecessary. We're gonna create the item. This may take a second because it is actually writing the smart contract that will live on the Ethereum blockchain. So just give this a second. Okay, cool. It uh, went ahead and wrote the contract. Now this is the least fun part. This is where you actually pay the Ethereum, your hard earned Ethereum to actually get this written to the blockchain. Everything is done by miners running computers and you need to pay them for their computing power to actually put this on the blockchain. Um, right now, and this always changes because the gas fee on Ethereum is constantly in flux. Right now, it's asking me $49 in Ethereum to actually mint this to the blockchain, which isn't, um, is within the normal region of what you would pay for gas fees. Um, I obviously don't have any Ethereum in this account, so it's telling me I have insufficient funds. You will, because we already went over that in a prior video. So you can go ahead and hit confirm, and then it will write your NFT, and it will forever be on the Ethereum blockchain at that point. Um, I'm going to reject this right now, but I want to show you one more asset that you should have. Um, and you should probably uh, check this out before you actually go and mint your NFT. Uh, we are going to search ETH gas station. We're going to go here. This is a website that will always show you the price of gas, the price to write a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. 67 is um, not bad. If you can get it at 40 or below, that's probably the best gas price that you're going to get. Um, if it's over 100, don't mint it. Um, if gas was over 100, it would cost you over $100 to mint that series of 10 NFTs right now. So don't do that. The best thing to do is kind of keep this up on your computer, keep an eye on gas prices. You'll notice that sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. Um, in a few months, gas might be way more expensive if, theory, if Ethereum starts to moon and go up to 10,000 or, or some shit. Gas could be quite expensive. Um, so this is all in flux. You just want to kind of keep an eye on what it is to that local time period, what, what like a high price is and a low price is. Right now, um, gas is relatively low and, and you could easily get it at 40. And then you're going to probably pay, you know, 35, $40 to actually mint your NFTs. So this is a good source for you to check. If gas is too high, just keep this open on a window on your desktop for a day or two. And when it gets low, then you jump over here and you go ahead and you mint your NFT. So yeah, you did it. Um, you, by all means, I'm going to cancel this again. Have as many NFTs if you, as you want, as many series as, as, as you want. You could go in and have four, five, or six of these. When I put out my last album, I have a unique NFT for each song on that album. I think I did three of each, but you could do 10 of each or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's it. You've got NFTs minted. In the next video, I'm going to go over um, getting your Rarible profile up to snuff because you want to treat this as a social network in and of itself. Dope. Y'all the shit. You got an NFT. Brrr. See you later.